Look, more of Soul's Cove Fiddlery, this time with an um, analysis of the operating current of this lamp. This is a um, Philips LED Slim style, one of these uh, really funky looking thingamajigs uh, that they've come out with in the past couple of months. Actually, within the past couple of months, like earlier this year. Um, 2014, for those of you watching this in the future. Um, overall, fairly interesting, albeit really weird looking lamp. Um, Looking at the construction, I haven't shot one of these open. Um, this fails, or who knows, given that they're only 10 bucks a piece. Might be interesting to just see what's inside. But it looks like there's just a, um, by the way, risk of electrocution, do not attempt, blah, 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 exposed mains. Um, judging by the internal construction, there look to be a pair of rings on either side of the lamp. Uh, there and there of LEDs. And there's just one big uh, dual-sided MCPCB taking up the whole center of this lamp, although there's a little hole in the center, but a few hundred mils in diameter. And, um, anyway, somewhat interesting product. Uh, fairly on the directional, but I don't know how it would fare in high temperature conditions, and at least this it looks very much like a GLS lamp, aside from the dark bit at the bottom where the, uh, control, where the, um, driver is, which I guess is probably just a simple, uh, offline constant current output switcher. Um, anyways, the um, operating current is this purple trace. Um, got it on my dimmer board, so I've got two potential curves, but I'm not using uh, the dimmer right now, so that so those are both the same thing. But um, yellow is mains in, or mains out of the auto tr out of the isolation transformer. The blue trace is potential after the dimmer. And purple is operating current measured through a 1 ohm current shunt right there. It's that white uh, cylinder or, or rectangular thingamajig. Anyways, um, current again fairly noisy as is typical. Um, frequency of that I've measured it, it's about, or I've looking at it in detail in the scope, it's in the neighborhood of. Um, 50 to 60 kilo cycles or so. Um, maximum and minimum currents both in the 200 change milliampere range. Um, peak to peak, 480 ish milliampere's off 147 milliampere's RMS. But again, hmm, adjust the curses again. I think that's probably an artifact of the lamp warming up, is the potential for which it operates turns on and off changes the, the actual main switcher driving the LEDs. Um, it's fairly interesting is that as the potential goes up the current actually drops a bit and then rises again as the current um, falls. Which is suggestive that it's probably that the operating region of this is constant power or constant current out through a non-changing potential load, which is the LED series string. You know, that's somewhat interesting, and uh, let me do the cursors again. But I think as the thing warms up, the region through which that thing, or which the switcher operates, changes, or the potential range it turns on and off. Yeah, before I was measuring about 40 to 50 volt, or high 40s, low 50s volts, the thing would turn on and turn off again. Now they've gone back up. It um, turns on at about 66 volts and off at 58. Although it is operating a bit when the potential is between those two ranges. And there's also the little hitch right there, which is, I guess, let's look at that on my cursor. Use the closer one. Oop, there. That's the wrong cursor. I want X. Nope. Switch mouse. Uh, yeah, that hitch is yeah pretty close to zero cross. Uh, y. Yeah, zero volts. So yeah, one. The only thing about this is that what I've seen in some of the Agilent scopes is the uh, 
is things like the time cursors will tell you the potential on a given curve that that, that of the or the or the um, level of the signal on which that a cursor is for a given channel and likewise with the time or and likewise with the potential cur cursors they'll tell you well no not those but the um, I've seen that on Agilent Scope that's one of the things where they're better beside the um, colors of the traces white bounce is going off funky but um yeah so so Agilent if your people are listening to this something in this kind of form factor with this whole uh, setup for controlling the um, segmented memory, the jog dial and um, or the dual level jog dial play, uh, replay, record buttons, something like this, your normal trace colors um, decent sample memory, none of the crap with the DSOX 2000 series where you're where you're using the same cases of higher end scopes and some of the buttons don't even do anything. Um, get rid of the stupidity as far as everything like this deep memory, segmented memory, costing extra money to enable, which given the insanely low cost of memory nowadays is just stupid. Um, things like combined with the your Mega Zoom ASIC offering things like hardware serial or serial decodes, um, um, and all that stuff in the two thousand two thousand five hundred dollar range for hundred megacycle input bandwidth scope um, you know five million to twenty million probably in the ten million to twenty million point to sample memory although by all means higher than that for two thousand two thousand five hundred dollars you would make a killing because this is where scopes like this are really beating the pants off of you and the only real problems are some of the things with the um, cursors and their oddball trace colors so yeah also one thing which I've only really seen Tektronics do where just minor things like the buttons lighting up the same color as their trays um, maybe also the case of the AC and the bandwidth just so you can tell as it is having the 50 ohm light up red uh, just you know warning don't pay attention to what you're sticking up the scope input because 50 ohms with stick a fairly high potential across it and say goodbye to the scope front end but yeah anyways and of course also that applies to Tektronix but then again since when have they produced anything decent in the past you know 10 or 15 years as far as DSOs are concerned because they're basically banking on the fact that they're the only scope maker that has National Institute of Standards and Technology traceability as standard on a lot of their scope models and this they have things like a thousand dollar four channel scope with two thousand five hundred points of sample memory per channel which is absolutely pathetic but then again it's just a bit of a rant anyways yeah because the, ser cause the software protocol decodes that this thing can do they get the job done but they're kind of on the slow side and they can be a bit buggy hardware is better but that also costs more but then again, I mean, I'm saying this is bad scope, knock on wood, but as is it with everything, there's room for improvement. <laughs>